construction paper right here on my table. And here is the stencil. Um, I, this is just the idea of how I can, again, I want you to be able to use your own creativity to design your fish however you choose to do so. This is just to show the body. I can place this right over here. And then I would take my drawing utensil and trace it out. And there we go. So we're gonna pretend that I just traced it out. I also went ahead and just sectioned off my areas that are going to be different colors. And then I left this space blank that's gonna be kind of like a free space to just design um, how you wish. For my other designs, I did what we looked at before as the labyrinths, where that was the concentric circles or the folding in spirals and squares. So to get started, after I have my stencil, and I've, I've already traced it, it's ready to go, before I place the glue on the paper, I want to kind of measure out and this is a guesstimation of measuring. Um, I'm going to do a green fish. Here's my green yarn. And first I'm going to outline and then fill in. So again, this is just a guesstimation of measuring. One thing I'll say that you maybe don't want to do or to be aware of is that when we go to measure, don't pull the string tight because as you can see, it, it will you know draw back up. So keep it loose and you can just kind of this is not an exact science. This is just kind of measuring around just to see, you know, what we have available. Again, we wanna be consciously aware of the uh, amount of material that we use always when we're using art materials just so that we have enough to go around for everyone. When I go to apply the glue, you know, sometimes you gotta, you know, get it going, but you're gonna be very, this is a, a new bottle, it's kind of, hard to squeeze. You don't want to have a, a thick puddle of glue because that is going to just get real messy. So just go around as, I can't see, as evenly as you can. And then after I've cut my, my yarn, my thread, I'm gonna take my handy dandy paintbrush handle here and I'm gonna just lay this down and it's really like we're drawing with this yarn. And I'm just gonna place it in. Now, the glue is white, and again, you can use clear, but it's going to dry clear, so no one's going to see any of this. I have it, I think a good challenge for this project would be uh, how you can go about doing this without getting your fingers sticky. How much of a challenge would that be? You're working with glue and try not to get your fingers sticky. It's going to happen, but to be aware of eliminating that will definitely aid in the process. So check this out. You see how I have additional left over right there? I'm gonna snip this and then just place it to the side because there's no doubt in my mind that I will be using that. Now I can go back and just kind of tap, tap, tap. And you will find when the more you do this, you're gonna become more comfortable with the medium and you're gonna be able to do more with it. Um, I'll show you in another uh, design idea where it's scalloped like this, where it's like the zigzag and such. You can actually take the handle of your paintbrush or the toothpick and mold and maneuver and make that form, that shape with the yarn much more easily. And this will start to really unfold. It becomes a very uh, therapeutic process. So at this point, you're gonna just go ahead and outline your uh, design that you've selected. And you can do this with a different color. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same color, but you, um, I find it easier to outline first. And as you can see, my yarn is not exactly the same shape, and that's okay. We have to remember that the material that we're using has a tendency of doing what comes natural to that. And because these are fibers that are wound together in a spiral, they're gonna maybe not want to make very sharp uh, designs. So it will be more curved. So give yourself some grace and do not get too uh, discouraged if you do not exactly meet the uh, design that you have laid out. Just do the best that you can with what you have and I'm sure it's going to look fantastic. 
Now that we've outlined our image, our design, I wanna show you another technique. Um, instead of using the bottle to squeeze and create like a track to run the thread on, um, I've actually got some glue right here in this container and I wanna show you another method. You can take a paintbrush, just like we were using the handle, and to give yourself a little bit more control over the material, you can paint this in and this will bring me to a, a way of showing you also how to fill in areas with our yarn. There's a couple of different ways I wanna show you. Always be sure to put your paintbrush in a cup of water when you're finished. Uh, we don't want to have any of our paintbrushes turn hard from the, from the glue. So I'm pulling out my yarn. I'm gonna go with green. I'm gonna change up my colors in a little bit. The reason I've chosen green is because I'm gonna do my fish with a contrasting color. So right now, I wanna show you um, what we can do to fill this area. You can take and start to circle around and create like a disc shape. And then when you make it to the size of your liking, and this is flat, I'm not rolling this into a ball, I'm almost making just kind of like a, a, a green yarn pancake here. I can place that right there in the center just like so, then I can trim, or if you've already cut your piece, that's fine too. This is actually probably a good idea to use your excess pieces that you had prior, and I just kind of press that down a little bit. Now with this already painted with my glue, I can easily just take my thread and lay it on down. You do wanna make sure that you have enough glue so that it will stick, and you're gonna to have to work relatively quickly um, because you know the glue, when you paint it on, it, it may have a tendency to dry a little bit faster, and you may have to use some of your fingers, but I just feel like using the back end of the paintbrush handle helps with it not sticking to your fingers. So just work with it, and sometimes you even have more control after it's begun to dry a little bit. So if you wanna hold it for a second to hold it in place and just mold it a little bit, you'll find what works for you. And again, you don't have to stick with exactly the same design that you had. You can, you're the artist, you have the license to create and change it up any way that you feel. All I have left is that one piece, and, and check this out. I have one uh, stray piece, and so I'm going to take some of my glue, fill in this area right here, knock that around so that it'll stick, and you're gonna get into some situations where you might have to pull it up and place it back down again, but you are the artist, so you get to choose what would be best. Now, I can then take, if I need to, if I feel that I need more glue in this area, I can take my paintbrush and just fill that in. Be careful not to pull up what you already have down. If this area, if you find that it's starting to pull up a lot and you're unable to work with it, leave it be and go to another area and then come back to it. So I'm going to take and actually, I'm gonna take a contrasting color. I'm going to use yellow. And as you can see, there's just a small space. I wanna put another round circular disc right here at the bottom. So again, I'll make a smaller one. I'm just gonna twist around. And when I get the desired size that I feel that will fit that space, I'm going to sit it down in there, press gently. I'm going to trim my edge. I can use the back of my handle of my paintbrush to work that in how I see fit. And then I'm going to pick back up where that little piece left off and I'm just gonna work it in to my edge. Now, as you may have seen in my turtle uh, example, the art, the yarn is much looser. It's not as tightly um, laid down within the design. You don't have to necessarily have all of the thread touching and filling in every bit of negative space. You can have some negative space showing, for instance, the difference here, you can see that you can see the construction paper showing up through the design. 
With this, it's more tight. So it's all in your preference, which you choose to create. Now that you've taken the time to outline your subject, your design, um, I went ahead and did the inside of the fins. Um, now we've outlined our design, so now I would like for us to frame and outline our actual composition. So you can do this in a, a series of ways, any way that um, is creative in your own um, ideal way of framing something. We could have a circle at each corner. We could have straight lines. Uh, for me, what I feel that I'm going to do for this one, I'm going to revert back to the symbols that we looked at before, and I would like to go all the way around with the sun's rays. So what I'm going to do is I can paint lines up here, and I can, but I don't want to paint too many, because I want to be able to, I don't want it to dry, and I, ooh, ooh, you didn't see that. And then I'm going to, it dries clear, so that's great. I'm gonna skip over my fish design there and just kind of lay down some vertical lines which symbolize the sun rays. I'm going to, I could use yellow, but I want to use my blue because colors are important and the design is important, but you can have free range as to how you design this yourself. It doesn't necessarily have to be yellow or orange to be the sun. Now I'm going to be a little bit different and have my yarn stick off of my paper. This will kind of even give the idea of it looking like stitches for a tapestry or patchwork. And besides that is the material that we're using is textile. So this will even highlight that more so. And now I want to, and this is when you're gonna be using your own discretion as to the um, artistic decisions that you choose to make to enhance your piece. So I'm going to now use a contrasting color, red, and I'm gonna just go around the edge. And I pre-measured, just to kinda, I should say guesstimate, a measurement of my frame with this red. And again, you can use, if you have a bottle, that's fine. If you choose to use your paintbrush with the glue, that's fine too. I'm gonna just go ahead and make my lines this way. Either one, it's six and one, half a dozen the other. Either way is fine. It's whatever is easiest for you. Um, and I may not have mentioned this before, but I'll mention it now. If you happen to make a mistake with the glue, you can always wipe it off with your paper towel. Or, um, and then when you do that, no worry because it will dry clear. So there's really no harm, no foul. This is one of those projects that I don't see many mistakes happening that will damage the overall um, outcome of your piece. So I have my handy dandy watermelon scissors available to me. I'm gonna lay this down, use the back of my paintbrush to just kind of get that in there. And if ever it doesn't move the way that you want, you can always cut it and then regroup to get it in the design that you wish. I'm jumping over my image and then I'll start again right here, pressing down and see this is a itty bitty little fold here. It may not, or bend, it may not stick that well, but it worked, yay. I'm gonna trim again. Whoa, oh, looky, looky. Sometimes that happens. And go back to it and just get it right back in there. No harm, no foul. There we go. When I did a practice the other day, my neck, I did it again. My necklace got caught up in the art. So be careful if you're wearing a necklace or you have long hair, because that could always get in the way as well. I jump over my image, come to this side, trim, be careful not to pull it. And I'm gonna go around this side to complete my frame. And again, you can look at some of the examples that I've included. I did two different frames on them. So this makes a third different example. Use your own imagination to design and decide how you wish to bring contrast into your frame for your overall piece. 
And so that's the last part of the frame. So I took some time to fill in the body of my fish and started on the back fin. At this time, I'm going to show how we can do our labyrinth design. And as you can see, my composition already makes a natural triangle there and here in the corner. So I'm going to use that shape space to emulate the uh, hut, the bamboo hut, their home. That was the symbol. But I'm also going to take the yarn and go in and out of it like the labyrinth. So again, we can use the paint brush to apply the paint. We can use the bottle. I'm going to create my triangle and just go in, making a smaller version of it. Now for color, I want to have something that's contrasting. I have my dark blue, my red, my green, my yellow. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and did I say that? One, two, three, four, what am I missing? Five, the blue. So now that I've done my glue in my shape of the triangle and the labyrinth, I'm going to use blue on the inside, my dark blue and just going to do a quick guesstimated measurement there. Very scientific. Uh, if I have excess, I will cut it and put it to the side. I'm going to lay it down following my track using the back of my paintbrush or the toothpick, whichever you have available to you. I'm going to line it right down and press as I go, kind of like walking it out, so to speak. And I don't want to use my finger too, too much because it seems to want to stick to my finger, but it's much easier of a process when I just follow it through. Now I take my excess and cut that off. Let's see. All right, and there we go. Now I have a choice. I can either choose to line it more and fill it in completely where you won't see the black construction paper or I can leave it the way that it is. And I really do like that. It creates a contrast not only with the color but with the, um, the technique. So for this idea, I've filled it in more compacted. It's more condensed. And then I have a more airy flow, which will um, emulate my water. So you can continue to choose how you wish to create the background, that negative space, how you choose to fill that in, whether you want it to be condensed or open. And I'm going to go ahead and finish up my fins and then we'll come back and see the final piece.